Sa ating pong pakikinig ng kapahayagan ng salita ng Diyos, tayo po ay tumayo at ating pong basahin ang kanyang salita na siyang basihan ng ating sermon this morning. We will be reading from Psalm 125 and in the New Testament, 2 Thessalonians 1, 5 to 10. Psalm 125. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds His people from this time forth and forevermore. For the scepter of the wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous, lest the righteous stretch out their hands to do wrong. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good and to those who are upright in their hearts. But those who turn aside to their crooked ways, the Lord will lead away with evildoers. Peace be upon Israel. And in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, 5-10, Paul writes, This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you are also suffering, since indeed God considers it just to repay with affliction those who afflict you, and to grant relief to you who are afflicted, as well as to us, when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with His mighty angels, in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His might when He comes on that day to be glorified in His saints and to be marveled at among all who have believed because our testimony to you was believed. Thus far, the reading of God's holy word. Tayo po'y manalangin. Our Lord and our God, now as we hear your word, may you fill us with your spirit. Soften our hearts that we may delight in your presence. Illumine and sharpen our minds so that we may discern your truth. And may you shape our wills that we may believe and hope in you and desire your ways and live for your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Tayo po yung mga kaupo. Magandang umaga po muli sa ating lahat. Isa po sa ating mga doctrinal standards ay yung Athanasian Creed. At kung kanina po yung binasa natin yung Nicene Creed, may kita po natin nakatabi nung Nicene Creed, yung Athanasian Creed. And it speaks about the doctrine of the Trinity and the two natures of Jesus Christ. Although hindi po si Athanasius yung nagsulat po noon, ito po yung pinangalan sa kanya dahil in the early church, he is considered as the champion of orthodoxy na talagang pinaglaban niya yung tamang katuruan ayon sa salita ng Diyos patungkol sa banal na Trinidad at sa dalawang kalikasan ni Heso Kristo. And in fighting or in defending this doctrine, Athanasius of Alexandria is also known for this popular quote. And I quote, If the world is against the truth, then I'm against the world. If the world is against the truth, then I am against the world. Such conviction is like saying, bagamat yung mga tao ay hindi sumunod sa Diyos, I will still follow God. But the question is, how could such people have that kind of boldness and confidence to stand for the truth even though the world is filled with error and wickedness and disobedience to God? How can they have that kind of conviction when wickedness and evil surrounds them? And that is something that we will be meditating upon as we go through Psalm 125. Now, if you will look at Psalm 125, kung titinan po natin yung structure dito, 
In verses 1 to 3, the psalmist expresses his confidence in the Lord plus his explanation kung bakit. Bakit siya nagkakaroon ng ganong confidence? Verse 1, he says, those who trust in the Lord cannot be moved. He's, he also says that the Lord is the one who surrounds His people. So He's affirming, He's confessing the truths that He holds on dearly. And that is the one that gives Him confidence. And in verse 3, nandun yung word na 4, and that gives the reason why He confesses His uh, confidence to God. He says, For the scepter of wickedness shall not rest. It shall not rest, it shall not abide in the land of the righteous. And then in verses 4 to 5, aside from the psalmist expressing his confidence upon uh, the Lord, the psalmist makes a petition to God. In verse 4, he says, Do good, O Lord, to those who are good, to those who are your people. And then for those who turn aside, the Lord will lead away, or may the Lord lead them away with evildoers. And finally, in verse 5, there's that closing, the end of verse 5, there's that closing declaration that there shall indeed be peace upon God's people. Now, following the storyline, in the past Lord's Day, sinusundan po natin yung storyline ng mga pilgrims who have gone uh, through uh, towards Jerusalem, galing sa kanilang uh, tahanan, going to Jerusalem. And following the storyline, what is happening here in Psalm 25? Kung babalikan po natin yung mga previous na Lord's Day, nakita po natin that the psalmist or the pilgrim is so disappointed with much evil, wickedness, and sin in his hometown. So much so that he desires to go to the presence of God in Jerusalem to, to worship God in the temple. But even though he arrived in the temple, nakita rin niya na dun mismo sa lugar where he expects the gospel where he expects the, the unity of faith among the people in Jerusalem, he was so disappointed. Hindi niya nakita yon, even within Jerusalem. And now here, in Psalm 25, he is witnessing also the wickedness upon the rulers and kings of Jerusalem. Yung term po doon sa verse 3, na scepter of wickedness. Yung scepter po kasi, yun yung isang, uh, yung, yung staff ng, ng king, and it is a symbol for the king, for the ruler. It symbolizes the king. So, it adds to the disappointment of the psalmist, of the pilgrim, that even among those who are supposed to execute righteousness and justice in the land, they themselves are also wicked and influencing people to do wickedness. So, with much disappointment within Jerusalem, the pilgrim here in Psalm 125 looks beyond the city. Dahil sa sobrang dami ng kanyang nakikita, he looks beyond the city and he sees the hills surrounding Jerusalem. Historically and geographically, yung mga hills na yon, even outside Jerusalem, ay tinuturing din na, tinatawag din na Mount Zion. At some point, ang tinawag na Mount Zion ay yung mismong city, Jerusalem, but even yung mountains surrounding uh, Jerusalem, they are also called Mount Zion. So he looks into the mountains and through that, he gains confidence. He remembers who God is. He remembers what is God to his people. And therefore, instead of having despair, instead of having total discouragement and disappointment in his stay in Jerusalem, the pilgrim shows confidence. He expresses his confidence, his praise to God. He remembers that God is the true king of Israel and the whole world. Yes, the kings, the rulers are also the one who are influencing the people with wickedness. But he understands that God is the true king in the midst of the opposition and disappointment outside or even inside Jerusalem. Throughout this psalm, he is saying that the righteous is safe, but the wicked shall not prevail and be cut off from among his people. And brothers and sisters, that is also the message for us as the New Testament pilgrims. Bagamat may hinaharap tayo na kasamaan, kasalanan sa, sa mundo na ito, na nahulog sa kasalanan, at kahit dito sa loob ng, ng iglesia in the visible church, believers have confidence 
that all is well for the people of God while it is not well for the wicked. All is well for the, for the believers, for the people of God, but all is not well for the wicked. So first point po natin, all is well for the people of God. Na paano po natin may kita yon dito sa Psalm? In verse 1, it speaks of the security and stability of the people of God. Sabi po doon sa verse 1, those who trust God cannot be moved. God's people be, cannot be shaken. They cannot be threatened. They cannot be taken out of the covenant of God. They are secured. Gaya na sinasabi ng, sa Psalm 21, di ba? Y- yun pa lang, sa simula pa lang, yun yung meditation ng pilgrim. And while he is here in Jerusalem, being surrounded by the wickedness, the pilgrim is confessing that they are secured. Kahit kung titinan po natin, in the New Testament testimony, Romans 5 verse 1, for those who believe in God, they are now reconciled with God. They now have peace with God. Romans 8 verse 1, therefore, those who are in Christ, for those who are in Christ, there's no more condemnation. That is why Paul could say in verse 31, if God is for us, who can be against us? Ang bundok po, di ba? He's speaking of the mountains, the, 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 the metaphor of mountains. Hindi mo po magagalaw ang bundok. No? Kahit anong uh, gawin natin, hindi mauusog ang isang bundok. So believers as well can never be moved out of God's grace. It is impossible. So for the believers, for the people of God, all is well for them because they are secure, they are stable in the hands of their covenant God. In verse 2, he also says that aside from security and stability, there's also the persistent and perpetual safety. So hindi lang po safety, it is a never-ending safety from God. As the Lord surrounds His people from this uh, the Lord surrounds His people from this time forth and forevermore. Nagpapatuloy. Uh, kung titinan po natin sa history of Israel, marami pong mga narratives, marami pong mga cases na ang Panginoon ay pumapalibot sa kanyang mga anak. He is protecting them. For example po, if you, if you are familiar with it, the story of Elisha, na kung saan, Pinalibutan siya ng mga Syrian armies, gusto siyang uh, patayin, at yung kanyang servant no, ay uh, very troubled, no? takot na takot kasi nakita niya yung army sa paligid niya. No? Pero sabi ni uh, Elisha, do not be troubled no? because there are more no, surrounding them from God. At nung pinag niya sa Diyos na, Big Lord, buksan mo yung, 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 uh, yung, yung mata ng kanyang servant. And he saw throughout the mountains there are chariots of fire that are surrounding them, protecting them as the people of God. And that is how God surrounds His people in the New Old Testament. But in particular, here in Psalm 125, paano pinoprotektahan ng Diyos yung psalmist dito? Well, if we will see in verse 3, God protects the psalmist here in such a way that the Lord will not let wickedness overcome the people of God. He protects them in such a way that the people of God would not fall away to sin na sila mismo, wala na silang choice, kundi mag-joy na lang sila, na sumunod na lang sila doon sa wickedness that they're experiencing in Jerusalem. Ganun po pagdating sa society, kahit sa panahon po natin, nakapag yung mga namumuno or those who are in authority in the society are wicked, that brings influence to the rest of the society towards wickedness. It can be by force no? or it could be by imitation. Alimbawa po, uh, bagamat hindi man tayo pinipwersa ng ating uh, ng government or those who are uh, influential in our society to do wickedness, their sinful lifestyle can be an influence sa atin. No? It becomes a norm in the society that people began, begin to imitate their sinful lifestyles and beliefs. Nagiging norm siya. Those we look up to in, our, in politics, in entertainment, in sports, etc. That becomes a norm in a society. So the same way here, in the context of the pilgrim, malamang na witness ng pilgrim na alaki ng influence 
ng mga tao, those who are ruling, those who have the scepter of wickedness, ang laki ng influence nila sa Jerusalem and he must have been tempted as well. Yet God protects his people by also ensuring that evil will not be so strong in the land that the righteous will have no choice or no other way but to join the error and wrongdoing. That is how God protects his people. So the psalmist here first is affirming that all is well for the people of God because they are safe and God will keep them from being overcome by wickedness. So that's for the people of God. Paano naman doon sa mga wicked and unbelievers? Well, if all is well for the believers, for the people of God, then all is not well for the wicked. Dahil ang Diyos po ay banal at dahil ang Diyos po ay matuwid, hindi niya po ahayaan na ang kasama ng manaig sa lahat. He cannot let wickedness prevail. How can we see this in the psalm? Well, in verse 3, he is saying that the wickedness have no portion in the land of God's people. The scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous. It cannot rest, it cannot settle down, it cannot remain. Hindi pwedeng manatili yung kasamaan doon sa lugar ng mga anak ng Diyos. And we can see that throughout uh, history of uh, Israel as well. O, lalo na nung nagkaroon ng uh, division ng kingdoms, the, the Israel, the, the, the uh, upper kingdom and the lower kingdom, the, the kingdom of Judah, na ang daming kings na dumaan. Although, mas marami sa Israel na mga hari na napaka-wicked, but there's one thing that we can observe in those kings, na the more wicked the king is, the shorter is his reign. The more wicked the king is, the shorter is his reign. May ito natin yun, especially in 1 Kings, 2 Kings, lagi nakalagay din, and he did what is evil in the sight of the Lord. Nakakalungkot. Pero, kahit ganun man, oh, hindi hinahayaan ng Diyos na manatili, na napakatagal nagahari yung mga hari na ito. For example, si Zimri, a king of Israel, in 1 Kings 16.5, sabi doon, he reigned for just seven days. <laughs> Imagine that. No, naging hari ka for one week, no, seven days. So hindi hinahayaan ng Diyos. Although they may reign for a time, God will not let them abide in the land of His people. In fact, it is not that they will not remain in the place of God's people. They will be driven away. They will be judged by God. Verses 4 to 5. Sabi doon, Do good, O Lord, to those who are good, and to those who are upright in the hearts, but to those who turn aside to their crooked ways, the Lord will lead away with evil doers. Those who turn aside, yung tinutukoy doon, those who turn aside, perhaps uh, it is uh, those who initially were not part of the wicked people, but they eventually turn away from God. Oh, perhaps some of those who, are, uh, who accompanied the, the faithful pilgrim, they turned away as they were influenced by the evil in Jerusalem. So together with the evildoers, God will remove them from the land and from the presence of God. So the psalmist is affirming here that all is not well for the wicked and those who turn away from God. Although those who believe in God abide forever and the Lord will do good to these people, the wicked will not remain but they will be punished by God himself in the end. So all is well for the people of God, but all is not well for those who are wicked and unbelievers. Now with these things na na-observe po natin sa Psalm 125, what do they mean to us? What do we see here? What does these things imply to us? Well, first and foremost, pinapakita po natin dito that God is sovereign over all people. At pag sinabi po natin that God is sovereign, no, yamang siya ang lumikha ng langit at ng lupa, siya ang nagmamayari ng lahat ng bagay, then siya rin ang namumuno sa lahat ng bagay. And God's sovereignty speaks that He has that absolute authority throughout everything. Na kung ano yung gusto niya, kung ano yung kanyang kalooban, yun ang masusunod. 
There is no power, there's no king over God. Kaya yung sinasabi dito, even though there's the scepter of wickedness, although there are kings who have the power over some people, yet God is over them. God is sovereign over them. Though the wicked rules, it is still God who will prevail. They are still under the rule of God and it is still God's purpose, God's will that will prevail over all of mankind. Take for instance what happened to Christ. Siya po mismo, nung nakita niya, na-experience niya that scepter of wickedness throughout his ministry. Sino po yung mga pinakaakaaway niya? The Sanhedrin, the elders, the, the, the chief priests, the scribes of Jews. Take also the, the Roman authorities. Sino pa nung, nung, nung uh, siya ay nandun sa lugar ni Pilate, sino pa yung kanilang pinalaya? No? Mas ginusto pa nilang palayain yung wicked Barabbas instead of Jesus Christ. So Christ himself experienced the scepter of wickedness in the land. Pero kahit ganun man yung nangyari, God only used them to fulfill His redemption. Bagamat yung mga tao na ito na namumuno sa panahon ni Kristo, they punished Him, they crucified Him, but in the very end, God used that for the sake that there will be a sacrifice for our sins. So yung kalooban pa rin ng Diyos natupad. And even though that happened, eventually, God also dealt with these people. God also dealt with them. In AD 70, the temple was destroyed. In the 400, uh, uh, 475 AD, where is Rome? Rome is destroyed. Asa na yung Rome ngayon? Wala. Hmm? Kaya nga po, it is very foolish for world leaders, for those who are in the authority in our societies to think that they can fight against God, that they can use their authority to promote evil, to, to, to promote what is immoral and it is against God's word. Natingin nila that they can, they can do whatever they want and still not be accountable to God. No, that is foolish for them. Because God is still over them and He is sovereign over them and they will be punished by God. At ganyan din po sa ating mga Kristiyano. Dahil po, ang Diyos, ang siya namumuno kahit sa mga tao na hindi nakakilala sa Diyos, sa mga tao na uh, sumusuway sa Diyos at doon sa mga nasa otoridad na sumusuway sa Diyos at nag influence sa mga tao, we are not to envy them. Why? Because in the very end, God will be the one to deal with them. And being sovereign over all people, God destroys the wicked and those who join them, but He does good to those who trust Him. For those who trust Him. One example po, no? Yung thief on the cross. Kung mapasahin po natin yun sa, sa, sa gospel, although that's a long passage, no? Nung una, kasama siya doon sa isa pang thief on the cross. They are mocking Jesus Christ. But eventually, through the Holy Spirit's work, of course, he soon recognized Jesus Christ as Lord and said to him that may the Lord remember him when he finally establishes his kingdom. At ano po yung sabi ni Cristo sa kanya? Truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. That's what God does to all who trust in Him, to all who trust in Jesus Christ. So God being sovereign, sovereign over all people, He judges the wicked, but He also rewards those who belong to Jesus Christ, those who trust in Him. And friends, God is also sovereign over you. And the question is, is all well with you? Can you also say in your heart that I trust in the Lord, I cannot be moved? He surrounds me, He is for me. Well, friends, until you trust in Christ, unless you belong to the people of God, you cannot say, no, okay lang lahat ng bagay sa buhay natin, that all things are well. No, everything is not okay. If you're living under the wrath of God, 
If you're living in disobedience to God, you're not recognizing Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, then not everything is okay. In fact, in 2 Thessalonians 1, 8-9, yung binasa po natin, that they will come when the Lord shall inflict vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction away from the presence of the Lord. Kaya po niya sinasabi ng psalmist, the wicked will not have a portion in the company of the righteous. Kaya po patuloy ang palawagan sa atin that we examine ourselves, do we trust Jesus Christ? Do we believe in Jesus Christ as our only Savior and Lord? John 3.16 is a very common verse, but sometimes we tend to take it for granted. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son so that whoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. Not perish, not driven away, not judged or punished by God, but given eternal life. So gaya po na sinasabi dito sa psalmist that those who trust in the Lord, may that be an admonition to us as well that we entrust ourselves in Christ and be completely confident in Him and in Him alone. To trust in Him means we become convinced of the true revelation of Jesus Christ as our complete and perfect Savior who made the perfect sacrifice so that we will be forgiven in our sins, be reconciled to God, and have the blessing that belongs to the people of God. Trusting Christ means that we rely not in our own righteousness, not in the things of this world, but relying only on His power and His promises. And you commit yourself to Him and follow Him. Not turning away, but following Jesus Christ. And for those who profess to be believers who may be struggling with sin or perhaps have fallen into sin, let this be an admonition po sa inyo. Don't run after sin. Don't turn away and follow sin. Don't turn aside to the crooked ways. Don't join the evildoers. If you have fallen, in fact, don't separate from God's people. Nandun po kasi yung tendency, di ba? Nakapag tayo, masyata tayo nag-struggle sa ating kasalanan o tayo nahulog sa kasalanan, all the more that we separate from the people of God. All the more na lumalayo tayo doon sa means ng grace, means of grace ng ating Panginoon. But no, that will only lead you further away from God. That will only, uh, only direct you away to the crooked ways to join the evildoers. But we need to be reminded over and over again, friends, that sin will only destroy you. That going towards the crooked ways, joining the evildoers will only lead to your destruction. So confess your sins, repent, and all the more to seek your refuge in God, in God alone. Bagamat po nag struggle tayo sa ating mga kasalanan at kahit sa influence of ungodliness in this fallen world and even inside the church, one way or another, God will not let evil so strong that you have no other choice than to follow it, than to give in to it. Ayun po yung panghawakan natin na pangako ng Diyos. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Ano po yung sabi doon? For no temptation has taken over you that is not common to man. But God is faithful and He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability but with the temptation itself provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. That you may be able to endure it. God promised to protect us being the sovereign Lord he promised to protect us and do everything to protect us, to keep us, to preserve us as His people. Therefore, with that confidence and hope, let us flee from sin and abide in God alone. 
Now, aside from the truth that God is sovereign and that it calls us to examine ourselves, whether we trust in Him, whether we belong to Him in Jesus Christ, may isa pa pong bagay na kailangan natin makita sa katotohanan na pinapakita sa atin ng Psalm 125. And that is that we must trust God while doing good even in the midst of trials and opposition. Trust God while doing good even in the midst of trials and oppositions. In the past Sundays, we looked and reflected upon the previous Psalms that in the face of disappointments, even within the visible church, yung response po ng, ng pilgrim in Psalm 123 is just, is just to fix his eyes on Christ rather than on people. In Psalm 124, We reflected on the fact that as pilgrims, we find our joy and gratitude in the great salvation of God and to rejoice in God's gift of salvation. And here in Psalm 125, we all can also reflect about, uh, on that one response. If we are disappointed with, with, uh, with the sin around us, even within the visible church, and that is to simply trust God and just be faithful in doing good. Bakit po? Because God will drive away the wicked, but He will do good to those who are faithful. Ayun po yung sinasabi ng Psalm sa atin eh. To those who are faithful, to those who are good and upright, not the imperfect, but those who trust God and are faithful in Him. You see, trusting God is not a passive state of heart. Hindi po siya passive state lang na tipo bang, ay, I trust God and, and that's it. It's just a theological knowledge in our mind. No. Trusting God results in good works, in obedience to Christ. You trust God and out of that uh, trust in God, there's gratitude to God. And in that gratitude, you also follow God. You run away from wickedness and you do what is good in the sight of God. Bagamat hindi po siya alternative to faith, Bagamat hindi po siya addition to faith, doing good works, obedience to God, and following Him in His Word is an expression of faith in Him. It is the expression, it is the result of our faith in Him. And at the same time, mga kaibigan, mga kapatid, fear and reverence of God casts out fear of men. So we believe in God, we trust in Him, and that itself, we cast away our fears of other people. Kasi kapag tayo po humaharap ng mga pagkakataon na kailangan nating tumayo at panindigan yung ating pananampalataya, napakalang po yung tendency, di po ba? Na matakot tayo sa mga tao. Ano yung sasabihin nila? Ano yung magiging, uh, magiging consequence nito sa, sa trabaho ko, sa pamilya ko, no? sa, sa mga uh, uh, kailangan ko sa buhay? There's that fear of men. But brothers and sisters, fear and reverence of God cast out the fear of men. Pag nakikita po natin, pag clear po sa atin na ang Diyos ang siyang namumuno sa lahat, na ang Diyos ang siyang mag- maghuhusga sa mga tao na, na nag-uupo sa atin, na namumuhay sa kasalanan, at siya rin ang siyang magbibigay ng pagpapala sa lahat ng mga tao, mga mananampalataya na sumusunod sa Kanya, then that itself, will help us to stand for the truth even in the midst of opposition. That itself will help us persevere even in the midst of disappointment because of people. Mahirap naman po talaga. Mahirap naman po talaga harapin yung mga disappointment outside or even inside the church. But we must trust and follow Christ nonetheless. You shouldn't worry too much. Because we have confidence that God is so holy, so righteous, so powerful that He will never let error and wickedness prevail. Here in verse 3, sabi po doon, The wicked will not remain in the land allotted to the righteous. Ultimately, that will happen because in the very end, It is God's land. The wicked will not have a portion in the land of the righteous because in the end, it is the land that belongs to God. 
Kaya ganun din po sa mundo, mga kaibigan. Although there's wickedness, there's sin in this fallen world that we see around us, we should not worry too much because this world is God's world. It is the Father's world. It belongs to Him. At ganun din po pagdating sa iglesia, na bagamat nandun po yung kasalanan, nandun po yung mga, uh, mga problema sa ating iglesia, we shouldn't worry too much because it is Christ Church. God will never leave the church under the reign of wickedness and sin because sin will never have a portion among the people of God. But just to clarify lang po, hindi po ibig sabihin na kapag ang mga tao ay umalis sa ating simbahan, they are the wicked. No? That they are being driven away from the church. Hindi po. No? Uh, we're not also saying na kapag tayo umalis sa isang church, uh, it necessarily means that we are being driven away uh, from God's people. Hindi po. Uh, even in uh, examples in history, the Protestants, they left the instituted church by that time. In uh, our Reformed forefathers in uh, 19, uh, 1800s, who left the Church of uh, Netherlands due to the error of liberalism. So we're not talking about a literal going out of church as a sign that uh, we are being wicked, driven away from God's people. Hindi po. But Christ will not allow His true church, those who truly belong to Him, to be in a state where error and wickedness prevails. He will preserve the church from the power and influence of sin until that time comes when finally the church will be spotless and perfect. In Revelation 22:15, sinabi rin po doon, in the new heavens and new earth, outside the heavenly city are the dogs, or referring to the sinners, and sorcerers, and the sexually immoral, and murderers, and idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. So truly on that day, there will be no more sin, no more wickedness in the place that is allotted to those who trust and follow Jesus Christ. So beloved, God reigns over all, and His justice shall stand. And all shall be well to those who trust in Christ. So while we face error and sin in the world or even in a visible church, let us trust Him. Let us just do His will and remain faithful in following Jesus Christ our Lord until He comes. Amen. Tayo po'y manalangin. Aming Ama, kami po ay nagpapasalamat sa pagkakataon na kami ay makarinig ng inyong salita at mapaalaha, mapaalalahanan na inyong katotohanan na sa kabila ng mga kasalanan, mga problema na aming pong hinaharap bilang mga mana ng palataya sa labas man na aming iglesia o kahit dito mismo sa aming iglesia, kayo ang nananatili ng Panginoon na nagahari sa lahat at kayo maghuhusga sa lahat ng mga makasalanan. Ngunit kayo rin ang magpapanatili sa lahat ng inyong mga anak na nagtitiwala kay Kristo. Nawa ito po ay maging kalakasan namin, encouraging us to just trust you and be confident in you and just do your will and be faithful in following you even in the midst of these trials. Kayo po ang patuloy na sumama sa amin for the rest of our Lord's Day. Sa pangalan ni Jesus, Amen.